the big sites in Yemen are being damaged and destroyed because of the conflict. And we can see this on the destruction of two of Yemen's museums, a museum in Damar and a museum in Taiz, with a total loss. Yemen was happy Arabia, or fortunate Arabia, Arabia Felix. Unfortunately, happy Arabia in the last year or so has been an unhappy place. A war that's involved many different countries and many different sides. It's seen a population trapped within its borders. With bombing from the air, naval blockade, naval shelling and ground troops. And with any conflict, ancient Yemen was, was connected by... رغم ظلوع الأجانب في نهب وسرقة أثار اليمن وسعيهم الحثيث لطمس هويته وتاريخه القديم بشتى الوسائل والإمكانيات إلا أن هذا الرجل يبدو منصفا ومحبا لتاريخ اليمن أكثر من بعض اليمنيين أنفسهم هو الخبير جون سيمسون أمين المتحف البريطاني والمسؤول عن شبه الجزيرة العربية القديمة وإيران يجب أن نتعلم منه درسا مهما وهو يتحدث عن أهمية أثار اليمن وتاريخه يتحدث بحرقة بالغة إزاء العبث الذي تعيشه كثير من المواقع الأثرية وما تشهده من بيع وتهريب في ظل حرب أكلت الأخضر واليابس في بلادنا طرحه الجميل ووجهة نظره المحترمة كوم وطريقة تعامله مع القطعة الأثرية التي بين يديه كوم آخر يستعمل القفازات حين يلامسها وهذه هي الطريقة العلمية المثلى للتعامل مع أي قطعة أثرية بينما نشاهد أناسا يتناولونها بأيديهم المجردة وبشكل عبثي لا يرقى إلى الأسلوب الذي نشاهده في هذه اللقطة الفيديو مأخوذ من صفحة الهيئة العامة للآثار والمتاحف والمخطوطات اليمنية Simpson, I'm a curator at the British Museum and I'm responsible for ancient Arabia and ancient Iran. Welcome to my corner. To the Greek and the Roman historians, Yemen was happy Arabia, or fortunate Arabia, Arabia Felix. Unfortunately, happy Arabia in the last year or so has been an unhappy place because it's been a country mired in conflict and war with huge humanitarian um, suffering and loss of life. It's a war that's involved many different countries and many different sides. It's seen a population trapped within its borders, with bombing from the air, naval blockade, naval shelling and ground troops. And with any conflict, there also comes uh, a cultural impact, and that has affected all of the four World Heritage Monuments inscribed on the UNESCO list. It's involved the total destruction of two of Yemen's museums, the museum in Damar and a museum in Taiz, with the total loss of, of the contents of those museums, thousands of objects destroyed. Ancient Yemen was connected by land and sea routes with its neighbors in the Horn of Africa, with India, with Egypt, Greece, Rome, and the rest of the Middle East. As a result, its culture was interconnected. And the interconnections of culture means that any damage to any part of it reflects on other societies. Now, those societies are ancient societies, but in a sense we're all successors and we're all inheritors of ancient societies and ancient cultures. The big sites in Yemen are being damaged and destroyed because of the conflict. And we can see this on satellite photos and photos that have been taken by very brave people who are visiting the sites and checking for themselves. These sites are significant because they're all unique. They all give a deep insight into life in ancient times in one of the great centers of civilization in Arabia. And we in the international museum sector are very, very concerned that in a, an immediate post-conflict situation, when borders are opened and people and objects can start to flow out of the country again, that we will see a problem of looting and trafficking of antiquities. So we've been working with UNESCO and ICOM to highlight the importance of cultural heritage and the potential loss of heritage through conflict and to create uh, a red list of Yemeni objects at risk. One of the most distinctive types of object from ancient Yemen that you see here in the British Museum for instance are carved funerary busts 
um, cut from beautifully polished yellowish alabaster or calcite. These were placed in cemeteries as memorials for the dead. But it's a type of object that has unfortunately also been trafficked illegally. And for that reason, it's a type of object that we will be highlighting on the red list of objects at risk from Yemen. A red list is a tool for the art market and for law enforcement agencies. It's a list of the sorts of objects that are collected and easily trafficked. Once the conflict has been brought to a close and peace has fallen on happy Arabia again, then there's the ability to work with archaeologists and museums and other cultural organisations in Yemen with Yemenis to promote and restore its national cultural heritage. At the moment we can't do that and therefore we're using the opportunity to put a spotlight on the importance of Yemen from afar. We implore you to go online, visit collections where you can and appreciate what you can see, what you can learn and from that understand why culture is important and what its loss means for you as individuals and for us as humanity in times of conflict.